name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Ember Days are, again, four times a year. They commemorate the seasons, originally in the agrarian society. Uh, if you didn't have a good crop, you didn't eat. <laughs> Every season was going to be Lent, if you had, unless you had a good one. And so this is even something that was, um, I won't say adapted, but uh, understood by the church. The pagans were already doing this, holding little festivals to the gods or the change of the seasons. So the church is like, okay, we need to, they have the right idea, thanking the gods for harvest, but it's really, it's one God, right? That's who we need to thank. So they got a good idea. Let's do it the right way. Hence the Ember Days. As uh, society became more industrialized, less agrarian, and it's just as the church progressed, they began to do ordinations on Ember Days, ord ordaining priests especially. Uh, the idea, of course, is now it's not a harvest of crop, it's a harvest of souls. And the, 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 the souls, the sons and daughters that, that, that parents give to the church, uh, that's a harvest. Uh, that's a tithing of the harvest. Um, and then those very sons and daughters who are, the har who are themselves a harvest, they become harvesters and harvest even more souls, right? Uh, the fields are white with the harvest. So uh, that's the imagery and the idea kind of behind the Ember Days. Um, and in between the readings, like there's five readings, uh, they would do ordinations. So like the first, second reading, you ordain the porters, the lectors, a few more readings, the exorcist acolyte, a few more readings, and so on. Lesson from Deuteronomy 26. Um, in those days Moses spoke to the people, saying, When thou hast made an, an end of tithing all thy fruits, thou shalt speak thus in the sight of the Lord thy God. I have taken that which was sanctified out of my house. I have given to the Levite and to the stranger and to the fatherless and to the widow, as thou hast commanded me. Boom. Okay, food, crops, grain, corn, oil, grapes, wonderful. Sons and daughters, that's the harder thing to give right? That which was sanctified out of my house, my good house, the good environment. I brought up my children well. I taught them the ways of the Lord. They are sanctified. They are holy. And I'm giving up um, my best, right? And it's going to be hardest to give up your favorite child, uh, not your, your bratty, you know, demon child, you, the, the, the near do well. I mean, there are stories of miraculous conversions, but God is going to ask from you, from you your best. He, he's going to want your, your, you know, the child that you love, the, the dear to your heart. Uh, it's not a small sacrifice of parents to give up sons and daughters to the religious life. Uh, but what a testament. Uh, I would say <laughs> we talked about predestination. Uh, God does not condemn souls to hell, right? He knows they're going to go there, um, and God knows he's going to go to heaven. And, and the signs of predestination, uh, you know, praying the rosary, right, from, from Louis de Montfort, devotion to Mary, but also religious vocations from a family, right? Uh, uh, mothers, fathers who have, who have sacrificed their, their, their sons and daughters, I would say it's a sign of predestination. Right? Uh, you don't gather figs from thistles. Um, and then the lesson goes on with all uh, the good things that um, uh, we are to do or that people have done. I have, I have done all the things that thou hast commanded. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord my God, etc. cetera. And, um, and the Lord hath chosen thee, oh, and this is Moses speaking to the people. The Lord has chosen thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he has spoken to thee and to keep all his commandments. This is uh, the God, God, the Lord has chosen thee to be a special people. Out of all the nations on the earth, God had chose one tribe, the tribe of Israel, to be a special people. Out of all the people on earth, right, baptism makes you the, the new tribe, the new Israel. We could say God has chosen us. That's why we're called a priestly people, a holy people. Even as God calls some children out of a family to be, uh, have a religious vocation, God, we could say, chooses uh, some people out of the human race to be a special people, and that, that is baptism. Of course, he calls everybody but many are called, few are chosen, because few want to be chosen. Few listen to the call. But all of us have that religious vocation. Um, okay, Deuteronomy, second lesson. Deuteronomy 11. Oh, and this is the blessings, right, of those who follow the, the will of the Lord. Moses said to the children of Israel, if you keep the commandments I give to you, if, uh, if you keep them, and love the Lord your God and walk in all his ways, the Lord will destroy all these nations before your face, and you shall possess them, which are greater and stronger than you. Every place your foot shall tread upon shall be yours. Right? We have nothing to fear. When we are doing the will of God, when the church is doing the will of God, there's no enemy so great that cannot be overcome. God is with us. Um, you know, that's like St. Bernadette, right? When she said when the, the Prussians were, were, were coming into France, and they asked her if she was afraid, and she said, no, I, 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 I not fear them. They said, what do you, what, what do you fear? I, I only fear bad Catholics, right? Because they have the grace of God, and they squander it. Uh, so just, you know, we're going to wander in the, in the desert for 40 years. If we, if we go up to the promised land and we're, like, and then we're told, okay, now it's time to take it, go into there and possess it. Oh, no, no, they're giants. We can't do it. T t timidity, 
that's going to make us wander for 40 years. Um, I mean, I don't think the time is yet, but the time is coming close, right? When, when the traditional mass is going to be making a comeback, when it's not so much the mass, it's the culture. It's the understanding of all this stuff that I talk about. This is the traditional church. This is the real church. Um, and it's, oh, it's still there. And that's what people find when they find the traditional mass. It's this. It's this truth. It's this continuity. So that's coming back. <clears throat> I don't know when our time is going to be to make the storm, make the assault, but it is coming. Um, you know, the, the world has never even heard what, what about the Catholic Church. Right? Whether the Catholic Church that the world sees, that's a, that's a caricature. So it's just another Protestant church. So the modern world, for 40, 50, 60, 70 years, has never seen the Catholic Church. When that breaks upon the world, oof, you're going to see conversions like never before. Oh, yeah. In those days, the priests made prayer while the sacrifice was consuming, and Jonathan beginning, and the rest answering. And, um, O Lord, deliver Israel from all, who didst deliver Israel from all evil, who chose uh, the fathers and didst sanctify them. Receive the sacrifice for all the people of Israel, and preserve thy own portion, and sanctify it. Um, so this is just amplifying that idea of, of taking uh, sons and daughters, men and women, uh, giving them to God, receive this sacrifice, uh, on behalf of the people, and preserve thy own portion. What's thy portion? Uh, the religious, right? Um, thou art my portion and my cup. The Levites uh, didn't get any um, land. Uh, he said, the Lord said, I am your land, right? I am your portion and your inheritance. Uh, hmm. Okay. Oh, here's a good prayer, the gradual. Of thy clemency, O Lord, we beseech thee, hearken to the prayers of thy people that we who are justly afflicted for our sins may be mercifully delivered for the glory of thy name. It's important that we pray to be delivered from the consequences of our own actions uh, because that makes us realize there are consequences to my actions. Actions have consequences, and God will not spare us from them. And it doesn't matter that we don't know that what I'm suffering is because of my own actions. I'm still going to suffer them. I say that all the time. God punishes sin. Ignorance punishes itself. And people wonder all the time, oh, why is my life so hard? Why is my family situation so difficult? Why is my life? What? It's because of you. You're the problem. You're causing. The way you treat other people is the reason they treat you the way they do. Uh, because even, I mean, you know, we have control over our own, our own action, right? And people can only act on the information we give them. And so often, we don't even know that we're sending signals, right? I mean, people who, like the choleric temperament, they have this trouble with their, their tone of voice. It's harsh. They don't realize that. Like, why is everybody acting like I'm angry all the time? Because you sound angry, right? You have to learn, but I, I'm not angry, but you sound angry, right? You have to work on that. Uh, you don't expect people to just give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, gosh, that was super harsh. Oh, but they don't really mean it. Don't expect that, right? If, if you have a problem, change it. Same thing with people on the other side of the spectrum. They're so timid, and they're like, oh, I always get overlooked. I always get taken advantage of. It's because that's what you project. So this is, this is the uh, justly afflicted for our sins. Actions have consequences. Our temperament, our demeanor, our speech, our posture, our behavior, all that has an effect on our life and the people around us. That's why nobility is so important, striving for character, striving to, if you know you have a flaw, remedy it. Ecclesiasticus 36. What's my lesson here? Oh, this is awesome. This is an epistle to the United Nations. This is what the UN should be. This is the attitude. Listen to this. Have mercy us, O God, and behold us and show us the light of thy mercies. Send thy fear upon the nations that have not sought after thee, that they may know that there is no God besides thee. Ooh, that's great. You should fe other nations, you should fear God. Oh, but God is merciful. God is kind. Fear is the beginning of wisdom. If you, if you want to be wise, you have to fear God. And he's not, not a servile fear, a cowering, trembling because he's going to abuse us because of his absolute power and majesty. The angels tremble in awe. That they may know there is no God besides thee and that they may show forth thy wonders. Because once these nations are converted, who knows what they're going to be able to do? Who knows what they're going to be capable of? That would be awesome. All those people, all those minds, all those intellects, all those unique persons God has created, when they turn to God and they realize the truth, oh, that's when world peace is going to happen. Lift up thy hand over the strange nations that they may see thy power. Whereas thou hast been sanctified in us in their sight, so thou shalt be magnified among them in our sight. It's like we want these other nations to be our friends. 
We want them to be magnified in our sight. We want them to grow. We want them to prosper. How about that for, for a message to humanity? The only way you're going to prosper is if you obey God because he made humanity. He knows what's going to make us happy, what's not, what's going to be prosperous, what's not, what's going to destroy society and humanity. God knows. Except that you can prosper. Um, that they may know thee as we also have known thee, that there is no God besides thee, O Lord. Renew thy signs, work new miracles, glorify thy hand and thy right arm, raise up, and this is interesting, raise up indignation and pour out thy wrath. Wait a minute, what happened to all the brotherhood? What happened to all the love? What happened to all the kindness? Mankind must be disciplined, just like a child. They may love their parents, the parents may love them. If the child's evil inclinations and proclivities are never disciplined, the child will be ruined. And this is what it's talking about. Raise up thy indignation, pour out thy wrath, take away the adversary, and crush the enemy. Well, who's the enemy? It's not the foreign nations, because we just prayed that they would be magnified. We want them to be raised up and powerful. We want them to see your mercy. We want them to see your glory and justice. Who's the enemy? It's Satan. It's the evil demons. And it's us. When we sin, when we do evil, that's the enemy. That's the adversary. Right? The adversary, to, to, the obstacle to world peace is uh, infidelity, is lack of belief in God. It is uh, uh, not abiding by the, Catholic, the principles of the Catholic Church. But then among the Catholics, it's pride. It's, it's arrogance. It's selfishness. Right? Those are always going to be the obstacles. So we're asking for God to crush and, and to, to defeat. Hasten the time, rem remember the end, that they may declare the wonderful works, O Lord our God. Uh, the next um, lesson is a canticle uh, from Daniel, chapter 3. And this is always the final lesson in all the Ember Saturdays. All the Ember Saturdays in all the year, uh, they always end with the same lesson. And it is the three youths uh, in the fiery furnace uh, whom God sent an angel and made the, the midst of the furnace like the, the, the uh, wind bringing dew, and they sang praises to God. And so there'll be other, another time we can go over that. Um, but the idea is in the midst of the burning furnace of adversity, a God can bring peace, right? God can bring refreshment. And the youths, they don't blame God, they praise him. Uh, bless the God. They recognize his majesty, and we bless God, right, in all, in all seasons. Uh, fire and heat, snow and ice, and so on. Uh, so uh, that's the final um, Ember Day lesson, and then the, the actual the epistle uh, for today, or uh, for tomorrow, Saturday. Mm. This is this is amplifying the idea that we uh, are our, 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 our enemy is ourself, our enemy is sin and iniquity. Uh, brethren, we beseech you, rebuke the unquiet, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men, even if that man is you. See that none render evil for evil, for evil, but ever follow that which is good towards each other and toward all men. Always rejoice, pray without ceasing, in all things give thanks. Um, despise not prophecies, uh, but prove all things. That means don't, don't disbelieve them, but prove it. Okay, yeah, this may be the prophecy where I'm not going to say, oh, that's impossible, God can't do it, but don't be gullible. Hold fast to that which is good from all appearance of evil. Refrain yourselves. Um, May the God of peace sanctify you in all things, that your whole spirit, soul, body may be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right, like we were talking about, uh, etiquette, manners, speech, comportment, behavior, and so on. Fix all of that. Uh, so you know those last two readings we had there um, uh, about about the conversion of the nations and then this rebuke all men, be at peace with all men, be patient with all men. Um, it all relates to the idea of harvest, of the harvest of souls, sending laborers into the vineyard, converting all nations, right? Bringing them all into the fold of Christ. It is possible. I, I do not believe that the world has to be divided. I don't believe that uh, Islam and Judaism and, and Protestantism has to continue forever. Those can end. Just as Christendom once was united and, and all of Christendom was Catholic. And I mean, it, generally, yeah, I mean, it was a mess, but it was a Catholic mess, right? Um, and there was what Sigrid Unset, uh, the, the, the author of... Um, or the, the famous book, uh, Kristen Lovren's Daughter, she did a lot of research. She converted, researching the Middle Ages. And she said, if you want to know what the Middle Ages was like, take a look around you at modern society and take away everything you don't like. That was the Middle Ages. Absolute beauty, harmony. Um, yes, I mean, there, 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 you hear certain things, but just the, the, the stability. You look at the world today, it's a cesspool. It's because it's not Catholic. Um, I, I'm not going to mention, actually, so the gospel. I'm not going to mention the gospel uh, because... Uh, it, it's just the, of the following Sunday. It's the transfiguration, and it's just, um, I guess the idea is that, 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 that people are transfigured uh, by grace. We can transfigure the world, uh, but that will be uh, something I'll address at another time. 
Uh, so I, I, I think, you know, we can unite the world under Catholicism. How is it going to happen? I have no idea. Uh, but we all can do our part. Praying, fasting, right? Uh, um, doing those little things every day you don't think matters. We are spectators to angels and men. So just keep that in mind, right? Um, uh, who knows what God can accomplish? Believe the incredible. We can do the impossible. And I firmly believe in the incredible. So who knows what kind of impossible things God will accomplish with us. Uh, keep up your Lenten penances. Uh, pray and always believe. God bless. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.